Hi, I'm Byron Richard with the Perfect Center for Arts Education. I'm here at the Minneapolis College of Art and Design with over a hundred uh, colleagues, teachers, uh, using arts integration as a strategy. They're part of a thing called an arts integration unit fair, and it's like a smorgasbord that they prepare for each other. It's really about feeding each other the best new ideas that they can come up with and to get feedback on those ideas. So right now, teachers are browsing. They're making decisions about which ones they're gonna come back and get more detailed conversations about. They'll have 15 minute, three 15 minute conversations to uh, spend with those three selected units. And the idea is for them to first hear from the presenting teacher team about their plan, their experiences, they delivered the unit, and what they found out now that they've done it in reflection. Then they have an opportunity to ask all the questions that are on their mind and how it might fit their circumstances, to give them feedback about things that they see as strengths and weaknesses, and to really have a complete, as complete a conversation as possible. We started out looking at how animals are classified, how they're grouped. We went through and read information where we took note cards to find facts, asking questions, what we wanted to know. Through that process, we made a little report so that they could share it with their peers and visitors. Using that, we then built a mini movie that included pictures and a few basic facts about their animal. We also did a sound that each animal would make and what they thought it represented to go with them. Well, when we were teaching, we let the kids choose instruments that made sounds, and this was one that they chose for the river otter because they thought it sounded like the animal and, you know, giving the kids options to choose how they sound, and it's like, they get to see all these other instruments that we were able to purchase through this grant so that there can be some new ones. And the kids just love kind of experimenting with the sounds and going, oh, I know what that would sound like. And it was amazing to me without influence in them that they heard something different. Like, I just, I, it's a frog. I automatically think frog or cricket. But these kids were like, no, I think that sounds like something scratching something or it sounds like the water, or it sounds like a wing flapping. And so we just let them experiment with the different types of sounds on their instruments and they picked them out in groups. Um, but it was just fun to have all the different types that they could hear all the crinkling sounds in. We had two owls and one said it should be fast because it sounds like wing flappings. The other one said it should be slow because it sounds like the woo hoo, woo hoo. So it was really cool to kind of hear what the two different groups were lucky. Basically with the same animals thought it was totally different in what instruments they chose. At William Kelly High School, the seventh graders did a Lake Superior Shipwrecks project where each student was given their own Lake Superior Shipwreck. Uh, they received two sources for their shipwreck, which they had to read and pull out information to write research paragraphs about, their first MLA research project. Um, then they chose a character in the, from the ship uh, and wrote a first person narrative based on the historical facts of their shipwreck. So they're working with two different kinds of writing and, and basing it on a historical event. They then worked with the math teacher at the school to create a scaled map of Lake Superior with relevant information to their shipwreck. Then we had the art teacher come in and teach them how to make stab bound books of their shipwreck and that's where we get these lovely books. Um, and the book of course has all the information, all of their writing and their map. Uh, the Lake Superior Shipwreck. Uh, the coolest parts about the project were that the students became really excited about the lake uh, and they started to have these conversations with their families about what their shipwreck was and then families would start to get interested in what are you doing in English class and, and what are you doing in math class and uh, all of a sudden what just started as learning a, uh, or getting kids to read in a way that we thought was interesting turned into a bigger community conversation. And so it turned out to be a really positive project in, in a lot of ways. We took a group of sixth graders, we took the whole class of sixth graders at our school, 
and we had an interactive day. We spent the morning talking about energy conversion and conservation with the kids, and then in the afternoon we went out into all their wetlands and we took photos of the different things and incorporating the visual arts standards. And the reason we did that is we came back and worked on a a sculpture piece in which they had to convert wind energy to electrical energy and they also had to incorporate the wetland environments and the photos they took into that windmill so they had to design and create really their freedom they could choose any of the different kinds of wetlands that are offered there in Minnesota. What we did is we started off learning about good composition and photography and why people take photographs when they're studying science and nature and engineering and then when it came around time to going to Cascade Meadow, they had to choose one of the wetlands at Cascade Meadow. For example, that's supposed to be a wooded swamp. So like a panoramic of a wooded swamp, you see the water, you see the things growing up, you see the sparse so trees. She created this so, in a sculpture. Yeah. And, and yeah. this is actually, that is actually one of the inspirations for this particular nice. piece. As a teacher, um, teaching in an arts integrated environment makes it more fun for the teacher as well as the students because as a teacher you actually learn more about your subject and other subjects and then you get a passion for, gain a passion for other subjects that you can then help the students with and find what they connect to and so if they like something, say you're not totally into science, but the kids are, if you're working with an integrated science unit, you gain a passion for that science that you're learning which you can then and share with the students as well. And then they gain that passion, and then they want to learn more, they want to get into it more, and so it's it creates an environment where everyone learns, and everybody's having fun and enjoying it, and everybody succeeds.